Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. It is that time, finally. Let's talk the winter forecast, my expectations for this winter. Uh, keep in mind at the end of the day, this is only a forecast. Nailing specifics months in advance is impossible. We'll talk pattern and do the best we can with this. Um, so let me jump into it here. Um, first of all, when you look at the guiding principles for the pattern for a winter time, I, I rank whether or not it's a La Nina or El Nino way up at the top of the list because it can help to anchor the winter time jet stream over North America and then that can decide who receives the most consistent heavy snowfall. So right now you can see it. Temperatures over the equator in the South Pacific are in the blue. They're running colder than normal. And to a degree that this is a La Nina. And you may have heard about this. This is a triple dip La Nina, which means this is going to be the third winter in a row where we've dealt to where we're going to deal with a La Nina phase. So that'll have specific implications. Um, within the winter, there are other things that we can look at to determine week by week or month by month that can affect the pattern, like MJO oscillation, Kelvin waves, things of that nature out in the Pacific. Um, so when I look at this, I'm also noticing two other important features. A heat wave, the warmer than normal temperatures up in the North Pacific and also in the North Atlantic, both of them can impact the, posi the position of the jet stream. Let me zoom in on the West Coast. This is gonna be a player, I think, and it'll be a player through December. And then after that, I'm not sure, but you can see I've plussed the area where the temperatures are warmer than normal. It's easy to spot with the reds, and then you've got a clear La Nina signature over the equator in the South Pacific. Now, what does it do? Well, some people call the warmer than normal temps up there in the North Pacific the warm blob. We've seen this in years past. It can anchor a very large ridge of high pressure and kind of move it around, sitting right over that warmer water. That can redirect the jet and redistribute where some of the heaviest snow will fall over a winter. I think it's going to be a factor early in the winter. I think it'll be a factor through the fall and probably December. And I'll show you what that could mean here coming up. But the warm blob, so it's basically just the North Pacific heat wave. You can see I've just marked the warm and the cold. Um, again, I do believe it stays uh, a factor through the fall. Um, so when you look at a specific region, the prime region called the 3.4 region in the South Pacific near the equator, the temperatures are, are running cold. You can see at the bottom of the chart in the blue in 2022, we've been at La Nina all the way through, and you can trace it back to 2021, and if you can trace it all the way back to late, um, 2020 there as well. So this is a triple dip three seasons in a row. And at minus 0.8, you can see that's the latest reading of, of uh, Celsius, so colder than normal. You have to go all the way back to 2010, 2011, 2010 specifically to find a colder period for June, July, August, and colder for May, June, July as well. So strongest in that region since 2010. And in that region, 3.4 region, the official forecast, and this is from the Climate Prediction Center, the blue bars represent La Nina, and they continue La Nina all the way through December, and then it starts to weaken January, February, March, and turns decidedly neutral by February, March, April. So there is a flip. We go from La Nina to neutral in that time frame, somewhere in January, February, March, April, somewhere in that time frame. And that's in line with what the climate forecast system also believes. So we run multiple scenarios out and this one is considered and it is weighted. And you can see the line, it, just, it, it, takes, a, it, tar it takes a turn and begins to reverse course. Below the dotted line represents um, the, below the, the straight dotted line is where we start to look for La Nina, and you can see the forecast starts to creep back up towards that dotted line sometime in December, January, February, March, somewhere right in there. So things start to weaken. La Nina weakens, the water starts to warm, and we go into a neutral phase. There's also something called the multivariate ENSO index. 
that takes into account five different variables in the Pacific. A lot of people like to look at this, and I always look at this, and you can see off to the side of the chart in the blue the three different dips, and this, the third dip, is actually the deepest, coldest, most negative strongest dip of all three seasons. So we are definitely pushing a strong La Nina into fall and early winter. And I do think that will have an impact. Uh, I think it's going to be a warm, dry fall, a late start to winter for a lot of the West. And it accounts, like I said, this M, this uh, INSO index uh, multivariate accounts for five different variables um, in this area. Uh, like I said, current dip is, and you can see the line, the 2021 dark line dipping down. When you compare it to historical context, this is a pretty deep, pretty strong dip for this. And you go back to 2011, that's on there. Um, and like I said, in, in that 3.4 region, this is the strongest we'd seen since 2010, 2011. So we're... This is definitely a strong one that we're pushing in. The triple dip, by the way, only happens about once every 20 to 22 years. So it is a pretty rare event. What is a La Nina? A little explainer here. Cooler than normal water in the South Pacific once it reaches, once it reaches a, a certain anomaly, which is minus 0.5 Celsius, then it clicks in. And then you're into a La Nina. And that's what we're seeing. You can see typically that tends to anchor the jet stream the polar and the southern in a very specific way that tends to favor the Pacific Northwest, parts of the uh, the British Columbia and Alberta areas, and then the northern tier of states in the, uh, the Intermountain West. And it tends to stay very dry across the southern tier of states. Here's my expectation. Here's my forecast as far as an overall pattern. It mirrors the last three winters. With an area of high pressure, more often than not, but not every week, anchored over the west, over the southwest, over California. So that pushes the most active weather into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, parts of Alberta, and the northern tier of states, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Those areas would be favored. And to some degree, the very northern part of the northeast of New England would also be favored for active weather. So my forecast would be like this for the West. The green balls would represent areas where I do think we will we'll see above normal snowfall for the winter season. It's it's Grand Targhee, it's Jackson Hole, it's, it's Big Sky, it's Sun Valley. It moves all the way up to the Pacific Northwest, BC, and parts of Alberta in Banff. The areas in the uh, the orange ball would be below normal or drier than normal, uh, drier than normal scenario. That's California, that's southern Utah, that's southern Colorado, and then everybody else caught in between is really just in a normal or almost too close to call type of pattern, where you're going to get a little bit of both. And so that's the way I see it, and that would deepen the drought in California. I think overall what we're looking at is a drier and warmer normal uh, the normal fall season. I think it's going to be a later uh, it's going to be a late start to winter. I think it'll really look and feel a lot like last year where you may have two or three snowstorms in the course of the fall, but overall you snap back to these very warm dry periods in between and then you're just waiting, waiting, waiting on the pattern to change and that may not happen until December. And that's exactly what happened last season. It didn't kick in when didn't kick in until December last year. In Colorado, southern Colorado was in for another dry winter. Everybody else is in a normal type of expectation in my forecast, a normal winter um, or too close to call where you might have flavorings of both. Um, drier, you may have a drier than normal period followed by an above normal period, but the two would sort of level out over the course of the entire winter. Um, you know, I like to forecast for Loveland. Um, the, that's the only place I, I've really even looked at a specific number. If I were to put a number on the entire winter for Loveland, I'd put about 300 inches for the entire winter. The 10-year average for Loveland is about 335. So, again, it's it's within the range. It's three to, you know, probably 330 um, so again, there are periods where you may find above normal snow and then followed by a week of below normal snow, but somewhere in that 300 inch range 
for Loveland. All right, let's go to the Northeast. Again, if the northern tier of states, uh, the northern tier of um, Vermont, New Hampshire, and uh, Maine may find above normal snow in those, those areas, everybody else should have normal type of snow. Um, this is a really busy graph. I know it's impossible to see unless you zoom in, but at the top of the list are my favorite resorts. I think go 105, 105% of normal. Um, you know, like Baker, Revelstoke, Whistler, Blackcomb, Banff, Sunshine, Big Sky, Jackson Hole, Jay Peak, and uh, Schweitzer. Those are the only areas that I see going above 100% for the winter. In fact, I actually put them and made a list as some of the biggest winters. Um, the biggest winners of the winter, Whistler, Blackcomb, Banff, Kicking Horse, Fernie, Revelstoke, Big Sky, Bridger, Whitefish, Discovery, Schweitzer, Brundage, Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, Sun Valley, Baker, Stevens, Rainier, and British Columbia in general. Those are the areas I think will do the best and have the most consistent winter snowfall week in and week out. If you're planning for Thanksgiving, plan on one of these places. If you're planning on Christmas, plan on one of these places. Here's the official winter forecast from NOAA and the Climate Prediction Center. Very similar to what I'm saying. Warmer than normal across the southern tier of states in the desert southwest. Cooler than normal temperatures northern tier. Here's the precip forecast. It mimics what I'm saying. Drier than normal south and southwest in California. Above normal for a certain slice, a certain area in the northern tier of states. Too close to call everywhere in between. So you end up with just like a normal type of winter snowfall in many of those areas. So that's it. I'll end on my forecast for the west again, the Intermountain West. And overall, in between, I just think that, you know, overall it's going to be a warmer than normal winter um, for most of these places. Um, so again, I would stay in the northern tier of states where you see the green balls for the most consistent winter snowfall. Thanks again for tuning in here. Always appreciate it.